as you can see, lots of changes this week. Um, where do we start? So obviously the decor, that is done. The wood is in, that had a two week soak. It had a PP, it had a boil. Um, and you'll notice there's a little bit of white on there, but that's normal, don't panic. Some of the fish eat that. I think it's a kind of, I need to check my facts here, either a mold or a fungus, but it nearly happens with every new wood you put in. Um, I've seen it loads. I'm told it's completely harmless. I think the bristle nose, if you can see him under there, will clean that up for me. He is loving having the wood in there. I don't think you're supposed to have a bristle nose if you haven't got any wood, because I like to chew on the wood. Um, and he's completely at home and is never off that wood now. So he's happy. I think it looks nicer. Um, I quite like that bit of wood. So that's one of the big changes. We've also had a bit of rearrange. There's more plants. Um, and I think we've got some good growth coming on because they've got some good root tabs in. And we've changed the lights. Now, the Prophylux 4 there is controlling the light bars. And if we can see on the laptop, hopefully that's in focus. We can actually set the spectrum very accurately. Um, and you can see there's two lines there. One's a chlorophyll A profile, one's chlorophyll B. And the lights are set to match that profile as closely as we can um, for most of the day. And there's various settings throughout the day which keep the lights, hopefully that's focused up. Fairly complicated, boring stuff, but they go up to 100% for I think about, what is it, two o'clock till seven o'clock. That's five hours. And then there's a couple of hours before and a couple of hours after where it ramps up and down. And then it goes dark completely. So the lights are completely redone. Um, one of the interesting things on the lights, and I don't know what's right or wrong anymore, is this blue bit. Um, if you search it up, plants need mostly blue light and red light to photosynthesize and therefore grow. I always thought if you had a lot of blue light, you got a lot of algae. So we've got a lot of blue light in here and we're getting quite a bit of algae. So the plan is, if the algae grows, surely it's good for the plants to grow. Makes sense in my brain. So we'll leave it like it is for now. We'll keep cleaning up. If it carries on, it doesn't die down. Because I know previously the plants grew quite well and we didn't have any algae. I don't know if that was because of the blue light, but the old light I used to run with hardly any blue going on and it was nearly all red and white wavelengths. So we'll see what happens. Um, but they certainly look much better with the blue light on. Um, so I'm liking the blue light. So we're keeping it for now. If the algae gets too much worse or carries on or doesn't die down, I might look at getting a few um, algae eaters, Otosynclus, or the, I think it's a Siamese algae eater. Um, see if he can clean up for us. But otherwise, there's more sand just in each corner. Then it goes very thin. Then it ramps back up over there. There is Amazon Swords, there's Giant Valis, and there is root tabs under almost each plant. And obviously they're getting the highlight levels as well. So it should grow, but let's see. They grew before quite easily in the other tank. I don't know why, but the plants just took off. So we'll see. It's all a bit new still. Uh, the plants are a bit new. The algae thing is a bit new. The lights are new. There's lots of change stuff. So we'll just have to keep on top of it. Keep tweaking it. Um, again, this was cleaned yesterday. Look at the mess they've made. Um, the good thing there is though, we've got this pump up in the corner. There's one up there. And there's another one up here. And again, the old Prophylux 4. Marvellous piece of machinery, um, which those guys nicely sent me to test out. Um, every now and again, that whips those pumps up to full power and it stirs it all around. So it's flowing from this side to here and then it's pushed down through those plants and they flap about a bit, but I think they like the flow. There's no dead spots. The cyano stuff's disappeared because the flow's much higher and all the dirt gets pushed out to here. And then we'll just woof that out with the old little vac handheld vacuum and we should be cleaner, which hopefully makes less algae. Let's see, um, it's all a work in progress, making it up as I go along. 
but um, as you can see there's a lot change the other thing um, and I've always had a pH problem uh, because of the RO water the re minerals have no KH in it so the pH will plummet after a day or two it's been down below five in here so and that's the thing we get a lot of questions on is what sand do we use so this is it was JBL Zanzibar I think I used which is quite expensive um, and then in the fish shop I found a bag of white sand said it was safe for fish tanks didn't have a label didn't have a logo don't know what make it is I bought that and chucked it in here that seems to be absolutely fine but again it doesn't help with the KH so what I've been doing I've got some of this stuff so that premium coral sand now coral sand is pretty much it says on here basically it's calcium carbonate so if I put that in there in the right amount I'm hoping it will increase the KH that'll buffer the pH and the pH won't keep dropping and already the pH has gone up to I think it's on 6.3 now and I water changed yesterday and it was down on 6 so it is making that pH increase I'll give it a KH test later but it means I can stick to the RO with the standard re-minerals in which I think puts the GH on a 3 it has no KH but I'm hoping that a measured amount of that carbonate, calcium carbonate, coral sand, will buffer that back up and will probably hopefully hit a straight line. Trouble is I don't know where, so I'm only putting a little bit in at a time for now. We can increase it or we can hoover it out. So it's a little bit of a work in progress, but we'll keep fiddling with that until they get a constant pH. Hopefully the plants will start to grow back like they were before. Um, and I think they are because that vallis over there was not getting up that high. And that's only been a week so it's looking good the algae working on that we'll get rid of it one way or another um, and cleaning every two two times a week with a hundred litre of water change twice a week and then obviously clean the algae out the pumps give it a stir um, there is a resin which takes the nitrates out I haven't tested the nitrates for a while I would think they're probably about 15 they normally are but I'll give it a test later and otherwise, everything and everyone, check him out, he's grown so well, he's looking good. So um, a lot of stuff has changed again. I know I'm bad for fiddling and you shouldn't fiddle, but now it's where it is. I'm liking the layout, I like the look, it's easy to clean. The water changes are easy, the cleaning's easy, the fish are happy. I'm gonna stick with this now, um, with no reason to really change anything and we'll see how we go. There is quite a bit of argy-bargy, but I think that's a factor that they're happy in there. I've got no hiders, I've got no non-eaters, I've got no dark fish. He has perked right back up since last week when he was hiding in the corner all dark, um, which is nice. This one is out and about all the time. He used to be in the corner, he's good. Um, Two yellow checks are always fighting each other, but um, nothing bad. There's never any real violence. Turn that light off because that reflects. Um, so I think we're happy. If this one had turned around, I'll show you how much better his dark face is because it's sort of disappearing. So I think he's improving too. Um, the only other job left to do is to get the Coil of Sturby some mates. I think that will help the cleaning up. That will help turn the sand over. And as I say, I might look at some algae eaters. So if anyone can recognize, re recommend a good algae fish, um, I think the Siamese algae is a, probably one of the best, but I'll probably have a chat with the bloke at the fish shop and see what he says. But I've got a quarantine problem because there's a pair in the little hospital tank with some eggs. So I need to work out how I'm gonna quarantine anything new because I'm not putting it straight in here because I think well I haven't seen any evidence of any flukes so there's been no flicking no flashing there's a little bit of wiggling of these um, I think they're ventral fins and the more I read if we can get one on camera I'll do it I'll, I'll, I'll film it um, 
but I'm told that's them deciding who's in charge. So there's some displaying going on there, see? These two have been fighting most of the week. But that one's fighting back. So that one's kind of giving up. So I think the old key to it all, there are, there's a bit of flick in there. He's still got his little white dot, um, but it's no worse. You can see a bit of damage on him where he's had a fight. Sorry, her, where she's had a fight. But otherwise, all is calm. And as I say, everyone is eating. The other problem I've got is the beef hearts run out, so I'm gonna make some. So watch out for a video on making the beef heart that's coming up. I've got a plan for that, so I don't get any red food in because I'm not gonna let him go orange. He's a very nice yellow color, and he's staying that way. So there we are. Everything is good. I think he's looking good. Um, the equipment's all working well. As usual, questions, comments, anything you want to know. I will continue to share what I do. I know these weekly ones don't seem to get that many views, but hopefully it helps some people. But at the moment, fingers crossed, they're all fairly easy. Check out the Lemon Tetras. I think they've been displaying to each other. You can tell the males because they have that darker black stripe along their bottom fin. But look, they've gone yellow. So I think that is a good indicator if your water's nice. If you've got lemon coloured lemon tetras, because they've been pasty for a while, like pale, and they've really coloured up recently, and they've started chasing each other around. So I think these dudes are happy too. So it's all good. Oh, the other thing we do, at night, the air comes on, but only at night, not during the day. Um, and that also helps keep the pH level. So having said, I don't think it's important, because I don't, because I've seen these go from 4.5, I think it's the lowest it's ever been, straight back up to 7.2 in the space of three minutes when the water change went in. They didn't care. Um, so I don't know if it's important, but we'll try and keep it stable, because it sounds sensible. Um, but it's never ever gonna be flat. This thing down here monitors the pH constantly, so you'll see that flush up on the front. If that's focusing up, there's the pH, 6.3 at the moment. I can do a little graph of that for the week and you'll see how it goes up and down during the day, during the night, it's a constant pattern. There's normally a steady downward trend after a water change because the KH gets used up. So hopefully that coral sand will put some of that back and we'll have a more steady pH. So there we go, that's this week's info. And as you can see, a lot has changed. And I think it's looking quite nice, I'm happy with that. Um, we'll let it settle down, we'll let the water level out. We'll keep them plants growing if we can. Uh, and as always, comments, questions, suggestions, if you think I'm doing it wrong, let me know. Um, it seems to be working. Everyone's looking good. That's about it for this week.